But to answer the question, was this installation worth it or this mod worth it? I would say yes. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. And today I'm gonna show you how to get free horsepower from pretty much any car on the road by porting your throttle body. And before we get started, let me show you guys the equipment that I'll be using. So this is an electric Dremel from Harbor Freight. I think it was around $30, $35. And I got these two things from Amazon right here. This is, I think, a drum sander. And there's various grits right here. There's 80 grit, 120 grit, and so forth. And this is a carbide tip, something like that, also from Amazon. And the other tools I'll be using are just your basic hand tools. So if you guys are new to the channel, this is my 2007 Z51 C6 Corvette. And this is the car that we're going to be working on today. And also, look at the little dog. He's sleepy. So now that we've opened up the engine bay, this is the part we have to remove right here. This is the throttle body. And... In order to do that, we have to remove this piece right here and also four bolts going around. So this is what a throttle body looks like from an LS engine with over 110,000 miles. From the front it doesn't look too bad but on the back you could just tell how dirty it is. Um, it's just part of the LS engine platform where for some reason the oil likes to come out from the intakes but yeah you could just see how dirty it is and I'm going to use some uh, simple green all purpose cleaner, some engine degreaser and just a little wire brush to clean this up. So now that it's somewhat clean, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a marker to draw a line at the resting position like this. This is the resting position right here. And this is going to be the fully closed position right here. So I'm going to draw another line around that and basically just trace it. And I'll explain why in just a little bit. Now the next step is to remove this center plate right here and I'm just going to mark it. So this is up right here. And we'll also do a little arrow so we know which side is up, just like that. And, oh, it's not focusing. And no one will ever notice this. So now I'm just going to remove this right here, right in the middle. Just like that. But this one, take it out with our finger. There we go. And this should just let out like all right and there we go the center plate is out so now that we've taken out the middle piece let's go back to the red lines that we drew out earlier and this is again the resting and also fully closed position so you can see there's one red line right there and the other one right here anything between those two red lines we don't want to take out because it can cause some idling issues so basically, if you mess this up, at this middle portion right here, your car will have a high idling when it's just uh, stationary and you're gonna have to end up buying a new one. So just be really careful, guys. And remember, we can always take out more, but we can't add back on. And same thing on the top right here. So I kind of scribbled it so it'll kind of make it easier for you guys to see. So anything in between that, we can't take out. But anything outside of those two lines, we can uh, smoothen out with the Dremel. So I'm gonna start uh, smoothing this out and this is the main areas of concern right here is this transition. 
you can't really tell on camera but I could just feel it by my hand that this right here is the biggest transition and we're just basically trying to knock that down as well as right here this transition and on this side it would be these transitions right here on this side it would be just this right here but remember just to stay out of this red zone right here and don't forget to wear safety glasses or goggles because obviously you don't want metal flying in your eyes so let's go ahead and do this Wow, look at this. This is what it looks like after using the carbide tips and I've taken out all the harsh transitions as you can see. And on this side, I honestly wasn't trying to get too close to the edge with that because it takes a lot of material away. And this side is a machine to perfectly fit on the intake manifold. But I'm gonna go ahead and use the sander. Start off with 80, 120, 420, 320. 400 and all the way up to 600 right here and I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll show you guys the results after oh my gosh you guys just missed out an hour of me just trying to make this as perfect as possible but yeah, you know, we got down all the way to 600 grit and it looks pretty good honestly you could leave it like this because this is already pretty smooth to the touch but what I'm gonna do now is get some actually start off with a thousand and then move on to 1500 and this is what it looks like after the 1500 I know it doesn't look smooth because of all these things but it's freaking like the last to be honest and after that I just clean it up and you guys gotta watch out for little bits and pieces that are in these little holes right here as well as like the slit up top I just use some uh, compressed air to get it out so now we have the task of putting this back in here and the best way to do that is by kind of twisting this and shoving a flathead through it and pulling it like this. And now that it's back on, we made sure this arrow is pointing up and this arrow is pointing up like we marked it earlier. I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten this back up. And this is what it looks like after it's all done. And now it's just time to put everything back together and hopefully it works. Well, it should work. I mean, this wasn't anything too crazy, but let me go ahead and put that and let's start up the car. So I just been driving it around and one thing I've noticed is just there's a little bit more pops on like the diesel and I honestly think I might need to get a tune soon because with the intake, uh, the ported throttle body now, as well as the exhaust uh, and <laughs> yeah I think I needed to do a, need a proper tune to be honest maybe soon but yeah so far it's been pretty good. Um, just like a little bit more pop on the D cell, but nothing too crazy. And I'm about to do a pull in a little bit on the freeway. Honestly, kind of scared because uh, I got pulled over the other day already for speeding. So definitely not trying to get another ticket. That's for sure. By the way, don't mind this check engine light. That's from my EVAP. It's not from um, the throttle body. But yeah, it's been there. I gotta clear it like every, I don't know, like 200, 300 miles. It's kind of annoying. I should just, I already replaced it, but I guess the code came up again. Maybe I should just buy a Chevy one, but 
you know, I'm not trying to spend <laughs> three times the price of what I can get, but whatever. the difference or not to be honest I have no idea if I could tell if there's a difference I got my heart racing low key, but uh, yeah, this thing feels. I, I could tell a slight difference, but to be honest, nothing, nothing crazy really. But I, yeah, I want to see the biggest difference is probably the sound. All right, so I only did like two little pulls because I was so scared because I just got a freaking ticket like two days before I filmed this video, and when I was driving around, there was just so many cops for I don't know what reason. So. Therefore, I couldn't really tell a big difference and the pedal, my pedal commander was on as well because I just drive it like that all the time and I didn't want it to affect it if I turn it off. So let's go to the pros. So obviously the first thing is that there's going to be a smoother transition of air, which is a good thing. And another thing is that it sounds a little bit different. Like I was saying earlier, um, when I was at stop signs, I could hear a little bit of the chop, but nothing too crazy. And also on the deceleration, there's a little bit more popping. And let, now let's talk about the con. So the first con is that it took about three to four hours just to do this whole thing. And honestly, it wasn't that big of a difference, at least from my butt dyno, I couldn't really tell. Um, whereas when I put the intake on and the pedal commander, it was just like, okay, like I could tell like the difference. But with this, it was kind of, I don't know, it's like one of those things where you do it and you're hoping it's actually working but it's actually not i don't know but to answer the question was this installation worth it or this mod worth it i would say yes honestly because it's something that is pretty much you could do on your spare time all in one day and this is practically a free mod that you could just do in your garage i mean it might not be a big difference but i do need to get a tune so maybe when that time comes it'll be an exponential change and also you can port your intake manifold which may be a possible future video but if you guys enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one <laughs>